So all the root vegetables are um, really hard. And so what you can do is chop them, but that's a bit hard on the old elbow grease. So what I suggest you do is you grate them. But let's have a quick look at the different types of root vegetables I've got here. Some of, some of them you'll be familiar with, the carrot. But things like sweet potatoes and butternut squash, you may have read that they're great for weaning foods, but you might not know how to tackle them. Well, sweet potatoes you treat in exactly the same way as you, you would a white potato and peel them and wash them, obviously, first, then peel them. You might want to take the top and tail off. And if you want to do it the old-fashioned way, grab yourself a grater and just grate it down until you get all the way through. If you've got a kitchen full of gadgets, then you might find that you've got a greater attachment on your food processor. That's a lot quicker. You can just whiz it through that way and end up with a nice grated finish on sweet potatoes. Butternut squash. If you haven't used squash before, um, actually all squash is is another name for pumpkin. So this one you see in a lot of supermarkets, but you can also get the great big red ones um, that you associate with Halloween. Um, and they make a really sweet, lovely puree as well. But butternut squash, they're usually this kind of shape. And what you do is you cut them open. They tend to be a little bit tough, so you need a little bit of work to get through them. And you'll see that they just have in the main bulbous part the seeds. The big pumpkins, the more round shape one, the more Halloween type one, has seeds all the way through it and less flesh. With butternut squash you get a lot more flesh in the, uh, in the vegetable. You just use a, a dessert spoon to scrape out the seeds. And then lay them down. This is a quick way, an easy way to peel them. You just lay them down and peel them all the way around. So now I'm going to show you some really simple no-cook purees that you introduce once your baby's comfortable with the co cooked purees like sweet potato, carrot, apple and pear. Giving your baby a warm puree is much nicer for their tummies because they've been used to warm milk and so they're not used to cold food. And cold food can make their little tummies jump or cramp up. So always serve the first few weeks warm baby food and then once your baby's comfortable with that you can make your life really, really simple with some no-cook purees. I've got a selection of fruit here which are really fantastic for really, really quick no-cook purees. So even if you can't be doing with all that cooking and steaming, then you can have a go at these. The most obvious one is banana, which um, is, if you like, nature's little gift. Because they come pre-wrapped and they're very portable. And all you do with a banana, to make banana puree, is simply peel it. When you first start, you won't need a whole banana, you probably use just a half one. Chop it up into smaller bits because it just makes it easier to put it through the, through, through, the, uh, through the herb chopper. You pop them in. You sometimes, depending how ripe the banana is, you may need to add a little bit more liquid. And um, for an extra creaminess, you could add a little bit of your baby's usual milk. And as an early winning food, just blitz it down to its really, until it's really smooth again. See, it comes out really creamy, even though there's actually quite a, um, a hard banana. Bananas, in fact, most of the no-cook purees don't freeze very well, so they're so easy to make. Just make a small amount up fresh and use it um, straight away. And that's exactly how you make no-cook purees. This can be easier, really. Um, so let me just go through some other things that are really great to do that way. Avocados, um, if you're not familiar with an avocado, they have a great big stone in the middle, so you run your knife all the way round and simply cut it open like this. Um, I find it easier just to score of the avocado so you don't have to do loads of chopping, it's already done. And then just use a spoon to scoop round the edge so they come out in bits already. And then, once again, all you do is put them into the blitzer, blitz them up into a puree, and another very quick no-cook puree. So I've shown you how to prepare a banana puree and avocado one. There's a couple of fruits that may be a little bit more unusual that also make really great uh, first-stage purees. This is a mango, and this is a papaya. I'm not going to show you how to make them, because this really is just a matter of just blitzing them up. 
but prepping them is a little bit more difficult. So here's a papaya. And there is always this really beautiful colour with these black seeds inside. And just as we did with the butternut squash, you just take a spoon, scoop out the seeds, and then you can either just chop them as I did with the avocados and then scoop them out if it's really ripe, or you can turn it over just as we did with the butternut squash again, peel it and then chop it up again. So that's papaya. And if you're not familiar with mangoes, mangoes have a very un quite unusual flat stone in them. So have a, first have a look at the mango and work out which is sort of the longest side and stand that down on the chopping board. And then what you want to try and do is cut either side of that stone. So you're not cutting exactly down the middle, you're trying to cut to the side of it. The other thing to look out for mangoes is that um, particularly if you buy them from a supermarket, some of them are marked smooth and some are marked fibrous. If you can, look out for the smooth ones. The fibrous ones, when you blitz them up in the, uh, in the blender, will end up with a little bit of a roughness to them, whereas the smooth ones come up with a really deliciously smooth puree. So with this piece, you just peel it as you would any other piece of fruit and slice off the fruit from the stone. They're really juicy, it makes it a little bit harder to do, but that's what we're trying to do here. And you can see this one is actually quite a fibrous one. And if you, it's worth doing it over a bowl so you catch the juices in. But then the real trick with a really ripe mango is, as I showed you with the avocado, cut the scores into the fruit, and then you can turn it inside out, like this. And then you can just slice off the pieces. Ready to blitz in the chopping bowl. And that's it. So some really simple no-cook purees.